Let's create a proxy service that will accept the incoming messages from the web portal. So uh, in the in sequence, let's define filter mediator uh, to filter out the customer and the company. So in the message, so this will be the message that that will the uh, the proxy will be met with. So if it is a customer message, it will filter that out. So then, if, if it is a customer message, so we need to create construct the payload that is required by the data service to invoke it. So if we try try the service at customer, uh, so this is the payload structure that we need to invoke the data service with. So in the mediation, we need to construct that message. So we need to uh, we need to use payload factor mediator for that. So I'm uh, defining and I'm adding the parameters that is required by the payload structure. So first, we, the name. So uh, it should be expression. So all these coming from the uh, message itself, except this system time. So it is received from a in, uh, defined property. So the other things are extracted by export from the message. So we have constructed the message. So that is required by uh, the data service in here. So after that, we need to add the uh, header mediator because uh, in the same service we have two operations. So we need to define the action as the add customer. So so we are in the then part of the filter. So uh, Okay, so after that, uh, before sending the message, I'm uh, doing a full log. Full log means the fully constructed message in the message context will be printed there. And then after that, I am uh, using store mediator. Uh, so I'm sending this to customer request store we have defined. So so the message four will be like the, uh, when the message came in, it will hit the filter. If it is a customer message, uh, it will be stored in the customer request store at the end of the day. So, uh, so now let's look at the else part. That is, uh, so in the else part. Uh, we are dealing with uh, company messages. So this is the structure needed by the company service. So uh, this will be the request uh, that is we sent to the proxy. So uh, in the same way, I'm defining a payload factory mediator to construct the payload. So this time, all the parameters will come in the message and we just need to define the relevant export to extract the values from the message and inject in, into the payload that we are building to invoke the data service with. Okay, so, so for company messages, uh, so uh, we need to define the action as at company. So scope will be transport as it is a transport header. And then before dropping it to the message store, I'm doing a full look. Accept proxy, customer payload after 
spoken technically the after transformation. Right. So here we go. So after the log, I am using the store mediator again to send this into the uh, company store. So uh, at that time, uh, what will be not is the message broker. So the the response, the mediated message will be stopped. So. So after all these things, uh, we need to uh, add this property for sexy accepted into the proxy because uh, the invoke of the proxy should not be expecting the reply from the proxy rather than a two not two. So, uh, so this property will guarantee that. So we have defined an in line. In, in sequence so we no need to define our sequence or the call sequence so let's save it you will see the request accepted proxy deploy successfully you can view the source of the proxy go into the source view and you can see all the mediators and logs we have to, uh, put this there so let's uh, test this service now so uh, we can start the so py project uh, let, let's put the project name and then uh, let's navigate to the visual of the proxy service of the request acceptor proxy and put it in the so py and let's create a so project using that list there and uh, this is the request for to add the customer record so we can invoke uh, the proxy service with these details and if we send it to the ESB so if you go to the row view you will see to not to accept it is printed and all the logs we have also printed so uh, the payload after transform and the replies from the db and if you go go to the customer table you will see the new record inserted So now let's look at the failure scenario. So th that is where the, this guaranteed delivery comes in. To test that, let's uh, stop the MySQL server and do this exercise again. And this time also to not to accept that it is sent by the USB, but the message uh, processor will fail because uh, the database is not there because the data service cannot insert the record into the database successfully it will fail and and it will try four times and then deactivate itself so if you go to the management console and activate it again again it will try four times and deactivate itself so that is the behavior of the uh, message forwarding processor so if you log into the management console of message broker node under customer queue you will see a one pending record to be dequeued so uh, if we fix the problem that is uh, starting the my sql server again and now if we go to the uh, ESB logs it will uh, uh, now let's log into the management console of ESB again and activate the message relevant message processor the customer and then uh, you will see that uh, the all the pending requests will be processed then and there automatically so if you go to the uh, table you will see another record is inserted there 
to log into the management console of MD now, you will see the company uh, queue is flushed out. So, uh, so this demonstrates how guarantee delivery can be achieved using WSO2 EI. The message forwarding position has various parameters. You can drop the message after maximum delivery attempts as well. So you can uh, define the task count to run it uh, in several nodes in, in a cluster, in a EI cluster. So uh, like message forwarding processor, we have some other type of message processors as well. Message processor is used to forward the message to another message store with the source message store is done for maintenance. So, uh, so as message processors, we have various types of message stores as well. Mario demonstrates how WSO2 EI can be used to implement a guaranteed delivery solution JMS. You can try it as well. Thanks for watching the video.